Uh, and you never hear somebody on their deathbed saying, I wish I'd have done more business. It's always about your family. It's about those you love and about the life you've led. A major loss in the world of TV is happening today uh, as the Ooh. final show for Pat Sajak on the Wheel of Fortune is happening today. May have happened, depending on your syndication, may have already happened. Um, but Pat Sajak, after 43 years, says goodbye to Wheel of Fortune, uh, a show that I think the wonderful thing about Wheel of Fortune is anybody can watch it, and it resonates with anybody. It's fun to watch. It's quick. It's the same thing every single day while still being different. And uh, Pat Sajak, as a long time, I mean, I've been watching since the 80s, right? Um, they've always been able to to modify the show, but the constant along the way has been Pat Sajak and Vanna White. And Pat Sajak says goodbye today. Uh, guys, I would like to open it up to you. Your thoughts on Wheel of Fortune and Pat Sajak. Will it ever be the same? Nope. It'll never be the same again. What a I mean, 40, we said 43. I thought it was 41. I don't know. It starts with a four. That's a long time to hold a job hosting a show. Uh, and and uh, he's had some wonderful zingers back in the day. Well, throughout the course of these 40-something years of people guessing some wrong answers. There was a really good one just recently. Um <laughs> that if we can find it, that's worth playing. Uh, yeah. It's very funny. The contestant made a wrong choice, uh, but it was great. Pat Sajak had a talk show back in the day, little known fact. And I know somebody who was on that talk show. This guy. Really? Uh, yeah. He had, a, he had a talk show he was doing for a while there. Really nice guy. Bless him. 40-something years. As it, it's, 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 that's more than a career. So bless him and and. Hopefully he um, just rides off into the sunset having a great time. Wait, tell me about this this talk show. Was it during his run of Wheel of Fortune? Yes. Like when when was this? Oh gosh, I think it was a late nineties. I'm guessing you could probably look it up. So. Pat Sajak show. It was. Uh, yeah, he was doing both. I mean, because when you're taping these game shows, he'll tape six in a day, right? Eight in a day, and if you're ripping through them. Uh, and it's great fun, and you zip through, and it's fun to watch. But they're they're banking him, so he had a lot of free time, and I mean, not a lot, but uh, uh, he had that talk show, and I don't know exactly when it 1989 was. Nineteen eighty nine to nineteen ninety, short lived late night talk show on CBS. Eighty nine to ninety. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Oh, there was something. Else. Maybe there was something else he did then. The, there was another one. He he that he, he had a, he had another one. I'm sure of it because I did it. And it wasn't in 89, I wouldn't have been doing it because well, uh, I was just out of college and I was playing for this team. Oh, the, the Bills. By the way, here is the uh, here is the clip, by the way, that you're talking about, the, the most recent, which was just spectacular. This is awesome. This guy, by the way, the tie in here is that the guy who guessed it is a gamer. And I don't know if you guys have seen the full clip because they asked him before. He's like, uh, when they go to the talk about the uh talk about the contestants he, he's like so you're a gamer and he's like yeah <laughs> you know so that's that's his profession which is great Boss up is worth one thousand dollars category is phrase and off we go i mean the exclamation point is brilliant here also. <laughs> like, it, it only adds to it <laughs> My favorite, my favorite thing about this is number one, the reaction of this lady over here, <laughs> how, how she is so shocked. What? And followed after that, Tavares over here, his his instant regret, and you can see it on his face right there. <laughs> the, uh, just, just the this instant. is not the first time going for the butt has got this man in trouble. Oh, <laughs> but up, but up. <laughs> And then we got this lady in the middle who's just along for the ride. She's just enjoying it. And it's like, that's cool. You know, I know what's going on. And right then the response, the then the response cool. from Pat. This was what cool. makes Pat Sajak so wonderful. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's 43 years of this. He's like, no. no. By the way, I think I found what Dean was talking about. Are you referring to the Pat Sajak weekend on Fox News in 2003? Bam. Okay, oh, no. yeah. Yes. Well, maybe. maybe. I don't know if it was on Fox News. I don't know if it was on Fox News. 
Uh, so from at least 2002, Sajak hosted the Pat Sajak Baseball Hour, a syndicate weekly radio sports talk show that ended in 2006 due to scheduling conflicts. Wow. Nope, that's not it. But Pat Sajak talking sports? That sounds awesome. Baseball. Wow. Seasons Larry King Live, where Sajak became a freaking guest host. Wow. Well, I could have sworn it was a Sajak show. Maybe I'm just crazy. Wow. You, you know, go. once you get past 50, your you know, faculty start to... Mm. Well, so I, I think it's Ryan Seacrest who's taken Pat Sajak's spot. Ew, and, is it? I think it I is. I thought that was Jeopardy stuff. Oh, I'm getting so confused. Ryan Seacrest is taking over over Wheel of Fortune? I think so, yeah. I think well, that's just, Does Ryan just not want to have a, a life, any home life whatsoever? I mean, yeah. how many things He's can he so host and fake. do? Yeah, that's Ryan crazy. Seacrest is, is, the, is, the, uh, is the replacement for Pat Sajak, which is really weird. So, oh, yeah, it is. Ew. Wow. Well, there we go. Uh, and Pat Sajak over on X, who who has some zingers over on X as well. He's, he's a great follow if you haven't. He just said, thank you all very much. Classy. Oh. There mm -hmm. it is. Easy breezy. So uh, good for Pat Sajak. He's going to roll off. And, you know, what a great life, though. You know, the idea of recording like six of these shows all in a day, getting the entire season knocked out in a month or so. And, and uh, then just chilling, man. I think I think that's great. Good good for Pat Sajak. That's a good thing. I, I'm one of those guys. Like a lot of people are like, you know, what's your next project? And blah blah blah. And I'm like, my favorite thing to do is be at home with my family and relaxing and, and enjoying life and or tra traveling, doing something. You know, every for every actor, they're always like, well, you got to have something. You got to have the next thing. You got to. And I'm like, I, I don't want to have the next thing. I want to hang out with my son. I want to go do things. I want to live. I want to sleep late. I'm gonna stay up late on occasion, not not last night, but um, you know that's the kind of there's a life, and I always wanted like that was for me when I'm on set, like I want to do my job, do the best I can, let's get it done, let's get it out, and let's get out of here because I want I love my life, and a lot of people I don't think they love their life. That makes me worry about Ryan, man. If you're doing that much stuff, are you ever home? I mean, he doesn't have right. kids or anything, I don't think. But so oof. I, I like Ryan; he's a nice guy. But damn, buddy. Don't work so damn hard. There is, there's a lot of that. And, and I think at a certain point, people, uh, you know, I saw this, this lady I follow, uh, she's a really smart businesswoman, and, and, uh, she took a quote from her dad and she put it up on X today. And she said, you will re uh, you'll never regret being a better husband than you were being a better business person or something along those lines. Right. Yeah. And like, that's the most, and I said that before, like my kids are the most important things I will build. It doesn't matter what businesses I have. The kids are my kids are the most important thing. So, um, right. yeah, and I, I think there's a certain point that people either get that or they don't get that. And uh, in that case, it doesn't look like it looks like Ryan Seacrest has chosen to build his his kids are his business, and that's yeah. that's okay. So everybody has their cool. choice. But as Harrison Butker just recently famously said, um, the most important thing for many of the people in, in the audience, Harrison Butker being the kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs, who's a very devout Catholic said, you know, you're probably looking more forward to having kids and raising a family and being a homemaker, um, which, by the way, is a wonderful and noble profession. And I love it. My mom was was there. I was raised with a mom and dad in the house all the time. Um, and it was fantastic. And I would like to be that. I would like to just be a homemaker. That'd be uh, wonderful. Stay home, take care of your family and your, and your kids and enjoy life. That's a good way to go. I, by the way, I'm looking at something here for Pat Jajak. And it uh, looks like he makes about three hundred grand per episode, Nothing and they that. probably do five a week. Um, just throw out the numbers there. Pat's going to be just fine. <laughs> I don't think he needs the money anymore. And bless him. Wow, three hundred grand to say <laughs> like no <laughs> to right in the butt. <laughs> Imagine how much you would get if he just said yes. That, that's, <laughs> Oh man, well, Pat Sajak doesn't need to worry about. Uh, I, I agree with you 100 about the family thing. You know, I my dream as a little boy was to work for Ghibli, DC Comics, and I live my dreams, Superman, Batman, all of it. And uh, I own my own successful comic book company now, and I don't, I'd trade it in a second if I had to pick between my wife and kids and all oh. that, and my granddaughter too, big baby. Um, being a father, being a grandfather, husband is the greatest thing in the world. All the money and all the work, it's great. You want to do it. 
but for sure you're never ever getting back those moments so like you dean i i try to prioritize family time and all that as much as i can i did it i did it i turned down being one of the highest paid actors in television oh uh, every time you tell me that story dude it hurts but i get it too it's just a it's one of those things you know i would have loved to have done the job and taken the show but uh I would never trade anything for the time I've had with my son. Pat Sajak weekend. It was okay. Thank you. Dead man. There you go. Um, so I feel better about that. Blabs. You were right. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, there's nothing like it. So, uh, and you never hear somebody on their deathbed saying, I wish I'd have done more business. It's always about your family. It's about those you love and about the life you've led. And so, um, I w- think, think of the ones that you love that have gone on and died, your grandparents, your relatives. Do you remember like, oh, yeah, grandpa was at work? Or do you remember when he took you to get ice cream or sat down with you? Wheel of Fortune is a very tender thing for me. I'd visit my grandparents in the summer and they would watch that at 7 p.m. So I'd be there with Granny and Pampy. That's what we call them. And they would watch that every night. And I would sort of go in their room and watch it with them. And you'd you be know, like, like that, that's Granny, stuff Granny I got this one. I got this one right in the butt. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pam, well, would be no, like, but... Gabe, get out. <laughs> but that, I mean, you're right, though. But that's the thing, Gabe, is is even today with my my kids and my family. So between my kids, me and my wife and my wife's parents, we watch Wheel of Fortune every time we're together. And right. every night, 6 o'clock, it's on locally, and we watch it. And it's just like you, Gabe, that is that has followed on for another 20 years later, uh, you know, 30, I don't know, <laughs> however many years later uh, it's been. And that's the one consistent. That's why Wheel of Fortune is so near and dear to so many people. You know, we talk about nostalgia being a being a, a very powerful thing. At the end of the day, all these properties, all these games, all these movies, people say, oh, that was the best. What they're really saying is that was a great time in my life right. when that happened. And um, that's that's what Wheel of Fortune has done. That's why pe- when people look back on Pat, Sa- Pat Sajak, they'll remember no, you know, they'll remember these moments <laughs> no. and, uh, and that's what's, and they'll I, remember uh, laughing with their parents, their parents. I'll, I'll remember laughing with Gabe and Dean and blabs about that. You know, right. that's, that's the beauty of, uh, of it for sure. So, yeah, well, said. I just, can I, I just, I uh, have a memory of my grandfather that uh, I love my grandfather. He was like a surrogate father to me. My parents divorced. He's a world war II veteran fought in the Pacific, all that greatest guy I ever knew. But, uh, and he picked me up from kindergarten one day. And he said, oh, I'm taking you to Wendy's. They have a hamburger waiting for you. And I was a very precocious little kid. And I sat there for a minute thinking about this hamburger. And I turned to my grandpa and said, do you think they know I don't like onions? I was very concerned that my hamburger that was waiting for me was just going to be filled with onions. And I was going to hate it. But uh, yeah, it was just, and it's not about him working or money or anything like that. It's just those little moments where you're hanging out with them and you feel validated. You feel loved and all that. And uh, yeah, Wheel of Fortune, I think, is that for a lot of people. I think we all have those um like I have I have small memories like that like when you when you're really small and you get picked up by a mom a dad a kid a parent whatever uh or a grandparent or something and and uh there's some sort of surprise and you're like wow that's you know for me that was uh I remember being picked up from like preschool it's like one of my very early memories being picked up by preschool and my mom uh had like an action figure for me or something and actually it was an action figure and I remember uh she gave it to me when I like got in the car and I was like, why, you know, why didn't she's like, I was just thinking about you and I loved you and I wanted to bring you a treat. And I was like, wow, like that's the, that's the greatest, you know? Uh, and it's like, how fortunate was I, you know, that day it was such a great thing. 